In this video the focus is on how to make a voltage doubler. Sometimes you need uh, say 25 volts and you only have a transformer from 12 volts. And the whole circuit doesn't take too much energy. In that case you can use a voltage doubler. And this is a circuit from a voltage doubler. Here we have the transformer. Here is a capacitor, two diodes and another capacitor. This uh, first part from the voltage doubler circuit is in fact only about uh, a transformer that generates a sine wave on say 50 Hz or 60 Hz or perhaps 1000 Hz, but the sine wave is important. When you have a transformer that generates an other waveform, uh, the voltages that you can expect here uh, are uh, not very well predictable or not so well predictable. Here you see that voltage doubler. It's a demo circuit that I've made. I also use it in experimental circuits. Here the diodes that I've used. And here the load. Quite a few 12 volt car lamps in series. There is a lot to tell about this circuit, but uh, let's say let's talk about the most important issues first. A fuse here, a fuse here that's advised. When the whole circuit takes a tiny current, you don't need a fuse and only a resistor here can be good enough. You also have to take in account that a current starts to flow here and that current can be quite high. Could be 2 ampere, 3 ampere at voltages between 12 and 100 volts. So uh, a good power can be generated by this circuit. One important thing to tell, the power at the input and at the output stays the same. When we put here, put in here 10 watts or uh, 12 watts, so 12 volt, 1 ampere AC, we get here approximately the double voltage but half of the current, so say 25 volts at 500 milliamperes. Um, the voltages that the capacitors have to handle are very important. When the voltage are not adequate, your capacitor will uh, fail or blow itself up uh, or, or somewhat like that. So let's look at the voltages that are necessary for the capacitors. Here in the demo circuit I've used quite an over voltage for this circuit because I wanted to use it for all kinds of purposes and also uh, in the 100 volt range or so. Uh, so here I have a 200 volt electrolyte capacitor and here I have a 350 volts electrolyte capacitor. And let me explain why that is. C1, that's this capacitor here, has to handle a higher voltage than the transformer gives. So that's here. Um, v peak. The peak voltage that the transformer can give, let's say it's 12 volts, but it, it um, must be multiplied first, that 12 volt multiplied by 1.4 and then take 30% extra. So for instance 12 volt AC in, the peak voltage is 16.8 volts, C1 uh, has in that case must be a 22 volt capacitor, electrolyte capacitor here. And C2 even has to have a higher voltage. This is the calculation for C2, so that's this capacitor here. C2 is 2 times V peak, so uh, 2 times 16.8 in this example, 12 volt. Yeah. And here 30% extra. Again, you can also go to a more safety 
then you use for instance 40% extra voltage but with 30% extra voltage you get to a capacitor an electrolytic capacitor that must be able to handle 43 volts for C2 in fact it's a very very simple schematic it works very good I've tested it many times but these are the things that you have to take in account the voltages that you um, from the from the electrolytics must be quite high that's my experience also in practical situations um, the diodes um, must be able to handle the current of course when you have a circuit where 3 ampere flows the diode must be able to handle the current 3 ampere or perhaps 4 and also the voltage but the voltage is often no problem silicon diodes um, for instance the 1N5408 can handle approximately 1000 volts it's another issue when you want to work with high voltage capacitors here you can also use them for high voltage circuits but that is part two the focus is on safety so don't let your electrolytics uh, don't mishandle your electrolytics here we have 25 volts AC out here is the voltage doubler we measure here when it's unloaded so nothing connected to that voltage doubler 74 volts you can see that a voltage from 25 volts gives 75 volts you could think it's a voltage tripler but there's always a load in the circuit and that's one of the issues from this circuit now I connect the load all these lamps here in series 12 volt lamps I connect the load now and we see that the voltage falls down to 21 volts and now my uh, fuse uh, 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 is defective but you could see it for a small moment too much current in the circuit but it was clearly to see that when you load the circuit the voltage drops substantially you have to do experiment with that for instance when you want to supply an amplifier that has to work on 25 volts or so uh, set the amplifier to its maximum uh, study the current that such an amplifier takes and see how the voltage uh, diminishes when the amplifier amplifies the, radio, uh, the audio signal very simple circuit very useful uh, when you have a transformer with a too low AC voltage you can use it but you have to take in account that the output can vary the voltage at the output can vary much more on different loads also very important to tell this capacitor C1 here has to have a quite high value when a substantial current must flow here so for instance when we uh, need here 1 ampere or 2 ampere the capacitor has to have a high value say 4700 microfarad and this capacitor here uh, uh, is part of the circuit and also has to have for a good hum suppression quite a high value but when you don't need hum suppression for all kinds of technical circuits, lamps, etc., uh, this capacitor uh, can stay low. So, say 470 microfarad. But this capacitance for a big current has to have a high value. That's important. For high voltage circuits, 1000 volts, uh, 3000, 4000 volts, you need these diodes, special diodes and of course also special capacitors that can handle that high current and perhaps it was visible for a small moment you could see that that the lamps flickered somewhat and that had to do that also has to do with the way this circuit is made 
the rectification is not like a bridge rectifier. So not the pure wave, the complete sine wave, is uh, rectified. Uh, the whole circuit is more vulner vulnerable to changes, um, and then I mean in the output voltage, related to the frequency from the transformer, the frequency that you use. So when you want to use such a circuit for an audio amplifier, you need a very good stabilizer to take all the hum out of this circuit. But for all kinds of technical circuits, that's no problem. You don't, for audio you need a good hum suppressor. Here's the circuit again. Here, good quality, very well usable capacitor, usable capacitors. High voltage and quite a high uh, capacitance value.